Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now if you are joining live, you will see a red live button at the top of the screen on the left hand side and you'll know that you are live with me today. If you can't see that, then you know that you're watching the replay. Um, and if you're watching over on my YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching over there. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, feel free to click on the red subscribe button. You'll find that down below on the right hand corner. Oh, sorry, it's not red. It's just, oh, well, actually, is it red? I don't know. I don't know what color it is. Maybe it's red. I can't remember now. Um, but click on the subscribe button. And then if you see, see the little bell icon, um, you can choose how you want to be notified of any of my new videos or all of my new videos. So um, click on the bell as well. And thank you so much for subscribing. Um, if you would like to subscribe to my newsletter as well, um, I keep everyone updated on the latest Stampin' Up! news, specials, promotions, my upcoming classes. I put creative content in there as well. So there's lots and lots of things happening and I send out a newsletter every week. Um, well, most weeks. Occasionally I'll miss one, but most weeks I send out a newsletter. So I will add the link for subscribing to my newsletter um, to this video, to the video recording, both on Facebook and on YouTube. So feel free to subscribe to my newsletter as well if you would like to keep up to date with what's happening in the Stampin' Up! world and in the world of Mandy's Papercraft Creations. So as you're jumping on, say hi. I'm going to call this up on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments. So I shall just bring that up now. Okay, and let's just see. There it is. Great. Good. Awesome. So I can see your comments. They'll pop up there. Um, and I don't have my laptop right here on my desk today. I've got it over on my other desk, so it's a little bit far away. Um, I don't have my distance glasses on, so I can't see it easily, but it's there just in case I need it. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we'll see how we go just with the iPad and comments today. The iPad doesn't hold the comments there. They go away after a little while um, if nobody's commenting. So then I've got to tap the screen to bring them back up. So um, yeah, that's why I often use my computer. Hey Rose, how are you going? Great to have you with us today. Hi Glenda, great to have you here as well. Thank you for joining me ladies. It's great to have you. Now I was um, just a few minutes late. I went to go live and realized, oh my goodness, I hadn't printed out my little... Um, my little host code um, label that I always have on my desk. So I just very quickly and roughly wrote one up on a post-it note. <laughs> so uh, that will also remind me that when I finish filming today that I have to go and print um, the proper one. So I've got to do that this week. So there's been a little bit going on here in our home. So um, I'll tell you a bit about that in a moment. Um, so how was everybody's weekend and your week, actually, since I saw you last? It's been a whole week, can you believe it? And now we're in winter and the uh, we've got the cold snap happen all of a sudden. So it's been freezing um, and super windy as well. I woke up early in the early hours of this morning um, with it really, really windy again as well. So the wind has been absolutely crazy. Hey Julie, how are you? Great to have you with us today. Um, yeah, so it, the weather has been crazy. Thankfully it's sunny, but um, yeah, bitterly cold. And it's gonna get colder. I don't like winter very much. So tell me, what is your favorite season of the month? I was just discussing this with Amber the other day and um, I decided that it, well, well actually, hang on, who was I just, I can't remember now, was I talking to Amber or Brooke about that now? One of the girls I was talking about the other day, about our favourite season. Oh, it was Amber, that's right. It was on the way to um, Kids Club, I think, or we we're talking about Kids Club at church. And um, yeah, so um, they had asked all the kids what their favourite season was. And um, yeah, and I decided that mine is probably spring i do like well autumn no i think i said autumn i like spring as well but spring can be a little bit windy as well um so autumn is is really beautiful and then you've got the beautiful colors of the leaves that come out on the trees as they're starting to fall and things like that so yeah um, but i do like spring as well i don't like winter and i used to love summer but um 
Now, I, I don't know. I, I do like summer. I like the warmer months, but maybe not quite so much as I used to. <laughs> now that I'm getting older, I feel the heat a bit more. Um, yeah. Hey, Helen, how are you? Great to have you here today. Glenda likes autumn and spring as well. Ah, so the same as me. Yeah, they're nice months, aren't they? You get sort of those, um, those in-between sort of temperatures, which is really, really nice. And the trees are always looking beautiful then too, because in spring you've got everything flowering, all the plants and the, the trees are flowering and things. And then in autumn, you've got all the beautiful autumn leaves and, you know, as, as the, um, the leaves start to get ready to fall in time for winter. So it's, um, it's really beautiful. Uh, Glenda said winter is good up here, but summer is much too hot. Yes. Yeah. The further north you go, the hotter it gets and the more humid it gets here in Australia. So, um, yes, it can be quite humid up there, up north. So, yeah. Well, those of you who have been following me on Facebook for a little while would already know this because I've been posting about it. And I'm not going to talk too much about it because I'm going to not cry today, hopefully. Um, but my daughter just left today for Queensland. She has got an amazing new job up there and... Um, so she's been preparing for that for a couple of weeks. Well, actually, she's been prepar preparing for this for 15 years, working towards it for 15 years. But um, yeah, the last couple of weeks, she's actually been preparing to leave, packing up everything in her room. Um, we've we've um, got a whole heap of things. Whole heap. We've actually got a whole apartment of furniture ready for her, um, which is really good. That's been um, given to her by a family member. So she's all set up, ready to go. She hasn't got her own apartment yet though. So all the big furniture will stay down here for now. And she's just taken what she needs for the next you know, few weeks or whatever until she can find her own apartment. Um, so she's just basically taken some suitcases and things like that for now. And all the big stuff and all her boxes of her wardrobe and all of her bits and pieces um, will go in a few weeks. So we've got a container shed with all the big items, like the big household items, and then all her boxes of clothing and bedding and linen and all of that are upstairs still in her room. So they'll go from here um, over to the storage shed, a little bit closer to time to when they're going to all be shifted um, and head up there. So anyway, so my husband drove her up today um, in her little car. So it's the biggest trip her little car has done. She's got a little Suzuki Swift and apparently the car is going very well and she's very proud of her little car. Um, going so well on this big trip, loaded all up. And um, yeah, and they're nearly there. So that's really good. They left very early this morning, but my husband's done all the driving um, for her. She's She's been napping a fair bit. She's been absolutely exhausted. But um, yeah, but it's been bittersweet. It's exciting because she's living her dream and um, this is the dream location that she wanted to work in and, and she got in. So um, um, she's going to be working as a, mar now let me get this right, a marine education officer or marine, yeah. Anyway, she's doing marine, mar marine animal educator. I think that's what it was. Um, so yeah, so she's going to be educating people about marine animals and doing some tours around the marine park and things like that. So that would be super awesome working with the, the stingrays and um, uh, not the dangerous ones, the lovely ones. <laughs> so um, working with the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the touch pool and, and around the reef, the reef um, pond and uh, not pond reef tank I think that's what they call it and things like that so yeah so it'll be really really good her ultimate goal is to work with the dolphins directly um, and so hopefully she'll have the opportunity to do that in the future um, but she'll be there with her dolphins every single day she'll be able to see them she'll be able to sit and watch them during her lunch break and it'll be awesome so um, yeah she's gonna stay with family I've got a sister up there and I've got some other relatives up there so she's staying with my sister for a little while until she finds her own place so it's a good transition for her and um, I think it will help her to settle in up there too into her new life up there um, but of course it's hard to let our little chickens go and fly the nest and spread their wings so um, yeah it's been an emotional time but anyway, we, um, we won't talk any more about that because I'll get teary again <laughs> and I'm trying to stay strong. So, but yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Hi, Lee, how are you going? No worries. You're not too late at all. Um, I was a little bit, uh, just a few minutes late jumping on myself. So all good. So I have got some beautiful projects to show you today. 
um, we in my team have done a card swap um, with products from the new catalogue and um, we have quite a, quite a, a good sized team now and each time we do a swap so it's only a new thing I've introduced to the team probably in the last um, Oh, probably over the last few catalogues, maybe the last three catalogues, perhaps or four, maybe. Um, but each time I've um, introduced, or each time I've offered the the card swap or the project swap for new catalogues, um, we have more and more team members participating, and they're getting really excited about it, and they're looking forward to the next one. So hopefully, with each one, we'll get more and more participation. Um, but I have got nine card swaps. We had nine in our swap this year. Uh, this not this year this catalog um, and the swap this time was based around the annual catalog so for those of you that don't know what a card swap is because some of you may not have had that experience before basically what you do is you choose a product that you want to focus on um, from um, usually from the new catalog um, or whatever that there might be a theme or something I usually do it per, per new catalog um, you choose the products that you want to highlight and you make multiples of the same project and then you send them out to the different people that are in the swap and then each person gets a compilation of um, cards. So we had nine people, nine team members in our card swap and so we've got nine different cards, So which is super exciting. Now I'm going to show mine last because that's what we're going to make today. We're going to be making my card today. Um, which I'm super excited to share with you. So I'm going to share with you all the rest of the team's um, beautiful projects that they have created and they've done such a great job. I'm so proud of them all. Um, they've done an absolutely beautiful job on these projects and for some of them, actually for quite a few of them, this was their very first time doing a swap. So um, and they really loved it. They were so exciting. So this is, they were so excited they found it exciting, use proper grammar. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is one of the fun things that we do in our, um, in our team. And it's not compulsory, it's just for whoever wants to join, uh, join in. But the, the products that we're highlighting are from our new annual catalogue. So if you haven't seen the new annual catalogue and you would like a copy of this, if you don't already have a demonstrator that you're working with, let me know because I'd love to send you a new catalogue. So this is the annual catalogue. It started on the 3rd of June. Oh, was it the 3rd or the, uh, sorry, May, not June. So it's been around for a month now. Yeah, it was the 3rd of May, just double checking my dates. And um, so many beautiful projects, uh, beautiful projects, project samples, products, um, all your staple items as well, like your inks, your paper, your cardstock, um, your tools and all that sort of thing, and a whole heap of stamps and dies and punches and all the beautiful things, coloring tools and all the fun stuff. So this is my working copy. As you see, I've got all my tabs everywhere. This helps me because I'm using it every day. And I went and got mine spiral bound and a plastic cover put on the front and the back, which helps protect it. Um, but these are where these... Um, new products have come from so I'll tell you what they are as we go along so um, but before we jump into that let me tell you quickly about a couple of promotions that Stampin' Up! has running at the moment so firstly we have the um, BOGO kit sale so did you all see that I don't have my flyers I um, forgot to print them out to be honest with everything else going on with um, our daughter leaving um, yeah, a few things have slipped through the cracks. So, and that was one of them. I didn't print all of my, my um, resources, um, but I'll have them printed ready for next week. But yes, the BOGO sale. So the BOGO um, kit sale is for all of the kits in the kit collection, which you can find in my online store at, uh, if you go to my blog, mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com, or you can go to my um, Stampin' Up! website um, and then click on the shop button. You can go there and um, you'll see an advertising banner come up across the top of the screen anyway. When you see the one for the kits BOGO sale, you can click on that and that'll take you through to all of the kits or you can just go to the menu, which is on the left hand side. Just click on the, I think it's like three little lines at the top. Click on that and that will drop down. Sorry, I'm pointing over that way because I always forget the camera's in reverse for me. So I'm working up opposite. So I've got to remember my left is your right and vice versa. <laughs> So yeah, click on that to the drop down menu and then click on kits collection. And with the BOGO sale, what happens is um, you get 
your you pay for your first kit so you, your first kit is full price your second kit that you choose will be 50% off now what will happen is as you put them as you put your kits in your um, in your basket or in your shopping cart Stampin up will actually take off the 50% from the most expensive kit which is super awesome because you'd think oh, okay you'd have to pay for the most expensive kit and get the cheaper one half price no for customers or anyone purchasing through the online store Stampin up will automatically take the 50% off the most expensive kit which is super awesome so um you can get two kits or you might like to get four kits or six kits but every second kit will have that 50 percent reduction put onto it which is super awesome now also too just to let you know i have an event coming up called my cards and cuppa afternoon it's going to be held on the uh 18th of june at two o'clock in the afternoon and we're holding that via zoom so we can um connect face to face even though it's not in person we're still face to face but the RSVP for that is today. So if you would like to join us, purchase your kits through my online store today and that will make you eligible to come along. And then what I'll do is I will get from your, um, your purchase, I will get your email address and I will email you with the link. Now, if you are part of my team, I've already let my team know this, but my team members get to come for free. So, um, my team members are welcome to come. They order their kits themselves through their own demonstrator ID. They don't order them through me. Um, and then they will come and join us as well. So it'll be um, a great big celebration. Well, hopefully it'll be a big celebration of our kits because we'll have um, some awesome ones that I've ordered um, a few. So I don't know which one I'm going to be using this month for our cards and cuppa. So I'll see. But my big brown box or BBB as we call it, which we call our deliveries, um, just arrived this morning with my kits in it and my pre-order from an upcoming catalogue which I'll talk about in a moment so super exciting more things happening more things coming up so yes yeah, so if you would like to join us for my cards and cuppa make sure that you um, pop your orders in for your kits today today is the last day otherwise um, you probably won't get them in time um, just because of shipping times and if there's any holdups or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so RSVP is today, 6th of June. So make sure you get your, your kit orders in today if you'd like to come and join us in my online store. Now, remember, you have to order them through my online store. So make sure you go um, here, okay, or here, and click on the shop button. And remember, if you are shopping with me, use my um, host code. There we go. Okay, and when your orders go over $75, I have increased it from 50. It used to be 50. Um, I'm, I'm putting it out there and being honest. It used to be 50, but I've had to put it up to 75 because we've had some price increases and we've also had um, some other uh, expense increases in terms of shipping and stuff like that. So I've had to put it up to $75. Um, which just helps me to cover my costs because when you spend $75, I send you a free gift. So I need to be able to cover my expenses there as well to be able to offer you those free gifts. So I hope you will understand. Um, everything goes up with inflation, doesn't it? So <laughs> it was time to put up my, um, my minimum for a gift. Um, so there we go. So that's happening. Now also to tomorrow on Tuesday the 7th, I have the RSVP of another class. Now I've had to put these two classes um, very close together in terms of the RSVP dates because I was waiting for my cards and couple one to advertise that until June so that I could advertise it with the BOGO special so that you could all get your kits um, at the discount because I wanted to I wanted you to all be able to get your kits with the 50% discount on the, that second kit. So um, in case you're wondering what BOGO means, it's B-O-G-O. -O. It's buy one, get one. So in this in this case, it's buy one, get one at 50% off. There's, that's where the BOGO comes from, if you've never heard that term before. Because when I joined Stampin' Up, that new term was new to me too. And I'm like, what's BOGO? So yeah. Um, but yes, Happy Hedgehogs is my next class. I advertised that last week. Um, but the RSVP for that is tomorrow. And we're going to be using the um, Happy Hedgehog bundle so that's the stamp set and dies and some of our swap cards we're going i'm going to share today have actually used that bundle so that's pretty cool i'll talk a bit more about that now that bundle is currently available as a bundle 
in the current mini catalog um, and you save 10% when you purchase that stamp set and bundle together and that 10% discount is built into my class price as well if you would like to join me for that class. So you need to register um, to, by tomorrow in that class. So if you go to my events section, um, you might need to click on more depending on what device you're um, looking at my, my uh, Facebook group. You might need to click on more and then there'll be a drop down box and you click on events. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, my nose has been so irritated with all the packing and oh, I've been so snuffly and sneezy the last few days. I don't have a cold. It just keep on getting itchy nose. Um, but yes, sorry, sorry, excuse, excuse that. <laughs> excuse my itchy nose. Um, yeah, so it's available at a bundle price at the moment. Um, it, it is carrying over that product, the Happy Hedgehog stamp set and the Hedgehog Builder Punch are carrying over into the new annual catalog. However, in the new annual catalog, they aren't bundled anymore. They're separate items. So while this catalog is still available for the rest of this month, June, till the end of June, you can get it still at the bundled price. But after that time, um, you'll be paying a bit more because you have to purchase them individually, not as a bundle. Hey, Megan, how are you going? Great to have you with us. So that's happening too. So look out for those two. So my um, cards and cuppa RSVP today, 6th of June. Happy Hedgehogs card making class is RSVP is tomorrow and you do need to complete the registration form for Happy Hedgehogs. That uh, has a different registration to Cards and Cuppa. Um, that one's tomorrow, 7th of June for the registration. So check them out in my events section and um, that will be awesome. Now also too, don't forget, we've got the last chance sale on at the moment as well from the mini catalog that is retiring. So that's the January to June 2021 mini catalog. Now all of the products that are in here, aside from the ones that are carrying over into the annual catalog, the ones that are retiring are only available while supplies last and there's up to 50% off some of those items. So if you haven't seen the last chance list, Go to my online store and check them out because there's lots and lots of great specials at, um, there. And also to check out if you like any of the bundles or any of the bundles from this catalog were on your wish list, um, get them this month before, um, before this catalog ends because a lot of those that are carrying over into the new catalog won't be bundled anymore and you'll miss out on that 10% discount. So make sure that you... Um, Oh, Lee says, what are the tabs on your catalog? Oh, let me tell you. Hey, Demity, how are you? Great to have you with us. Um, all the tabs on my catalog. So basically what I do is I break up my catalog into the different sections because in your annual catalog, there's all different sections in there. Um, which helps me to find things. So there's, um, you've got the contents, of course, at the beginning. There you've got information about the kits. Then you've got the themes for the different um, stamp sets. So you've got all occasions, kids and babies, love, thanks and support, etc., etc. So there's a whole heap of different categories. And you do have inside the catalog, um, let me just find one. Inside the catalog at the top, hang on, I'll turn the page over. There we go. At the, well, this side, at the top here, there's a little tab, a little colored tab, and it tells you what section of the catalog you're in. Um, but for me, when I'm trying to reference something really quickly, uh, this these tabs down the side help me. And also, too, I've added additional ones at the back where I'm referencing all the time, like my colours, um, my ink pads, my tools, my um, stamp and cut and emboss machine and dies, my punches, ribbon and bling, of course. I've got them labelled. They're important, my ribbon and bling, and my DSP and things like that. So... It just helps me to find different things in the catalogue. And then up the top here, I've got all of the sweets. And I forgot, I've got to add one because I missed one when I first did it. I missed the He's a Man suite. So I um, keep forgetting to add that tab in. Need to add one. Um, so I've just done my own. Now, um, as demonstrators, we do have the option of purchasing um, tabs that Stampin' Up! have created for us four different sections in the catalog as well um, so we can use them ourselves or pass them on to our team or to our customers um, i actually had already tabbed mine before i had received my stampin up ones so i've sort of kept them aside um, to give away as gifts hi deborah how are you um 
Oh, you're on the couch today, not on the computer. Oh, you can't move because the puppy's asleep on your lap. Okay. <laughs> it is just like having a new baby, isn't it, Deborah? <laughs> it really is. Um, yeah, so that's some of the promotions that happen is happening. So the BOGO kit sale, last chance sale. I've got my cards and cuppa coming up and my happy hedgehog class. So it's all happening. Now, before we move on to showing you those um, beautiful swap cards and then we'll get into our project, let me just tell you something else that's exciting. So because this catalog is retiring, of course, it's making way for another new catalog. <laughs> So super exciting as of the 1st of July is it 1st of July yeah 1st of July we have our brand new mini catalog now I didn't get a chance to show you last week because I wasn't live last week I was at my daughter's work down here before she left um, having beautiful animal experiences at her work so we got to pat her dugong i got to meet some other amazing incredible animals got a little tour behind the scenes of all different things and saw some of the um uh the other animals um that are yeah sort of back of house that people don't get to see so it was really really exciting um but yeah so the new mini catalog is coming so we've got lots and lots of beautiful seasonal products in this one so lots of christmas products lots of um, um there's also halloween if you celebrate halloween um, i don't celebrate halloween but lots of you do that's okay um and there's some seasonal ones in there some beautiful um, nature inspired products as well um, just so many beautiful things in here and um, I can't wait to show you the inside of the catalog now I can't show you the inside until the 1st of July but I can show you as I get the products so um, as demonstrators we get to purchase the products early which is one of the perks of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator my uh, pre-order as we call it just arrived this morning so I haven't opened it yet so I've only ordered a few things for now I'll be ordering some more next month um, but I've got a few to get me started so I'll be able to share those actual physical products with you um, once I open my box so I might do another live later this week you might get to see them later this week so stay tuned now not only that we have mini catalog coming but we have our second celebration coming for the year, which is super exciting. So celebration this time is going to be from the 1st of July to the end of August. 31st. I have to think how many days in August, 30 or 31. <laughs> Isn't that bad? Um, yeah, to the 31st of August. And during celebration, with every purchase of $90, you get to choose a free product out of the celebration brochure, which is super exciting. And um, so I've got some of those in my pre-order as well. So I'll be able to share those with you. So that's what's coming. Um, but remember, currently we've got the last chance sale from the catalog that's retiring and um, making way for the new catalog and celebration. So we'll talk more about that um, in this month as this comes up. Um, I've already ordered catalogs for my current customers as well. So they'll be receiving those new catalogs. Um, in a few weeks or in the next few weeks if you would also like one of those catalogs and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator let me know because I've ordered some spares as well so I can pop one in the post for you too so lots and lots happening super exciting all right um, oh we're not having an unboxing video today Megan because I already had something planned and I wasn't sure if my box would actually get here today or tomorrow but I might be doing an unboxing video later in the week so I kind of want to unbox I don't know I might decide to keep it over till next Monday but I'm not sure I think I want to kind of show them straight away so we'll see we'll see how the week pans out I won't make any promises just in case but I might get a chance to do it in the next probably not tomorrow because I've got other things other commitments tomorrow maybe on Wednesday we'll see we'll see how we go um, but anyway let me show you these beautiful cards that my team have made oh my goodness I'm so proud of my team they have done an amazing job with these beautiful swap cards so I'll hold them up and I'll tell you about the um, products that they have used on each of these cards all right now I'm not sure um, if these are in order of how I've received them no they're not actually they're they're, a bit, they're all mixed up now but that's okay so this beautiful one oh my goodness look at the detail in this one this is gorgeous so 
um, Roz Pedersen Court on my team made this beautiful card using, now I've got it written on the back here, Heron Habitat Bundle and the Textured Chic Specialty Paper. How gorgeous is that? Isn't that just beautiful? And I love um, this paper, like really has like an oriental sort of feel to it, which is beautiful. And she's embossed the paper with the, um, not sure if you can see it, with the Textured Chic Special, um, oh, actually I don't have the, I don't have the, I don't know if you can even see it, the embossing folder written down. Let me just see. I'll quickly look that one up for you because she's used an embossing one of the new embossing folders too. Um, do, 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 do. Here we go, embossing folders. See, I'm using my tabs, embossing folders. She has used the new Into the Clouds embossing folder. It's this one here. I'll just quickly show you in the catalog. It's this one here. She's used, which is super awesome. When I saw that one in the catalogue, I was like, oh wow, I wonder what that one's going to look like. But she's done it on the paper, on the designer series paper. It's a bit hard to see on camera, but it looks amazing. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Thank you, Roz, for your card. That's so gorgeous. I have already, I have already thanked her, but yeah, isn't it beautiful? Yes, all the products um, that are in the swap are from the new annual catalogue, Megan. Yes, correct. Yep. Yep. So um, that was in my first one. That was actually the first one I did receive. So really beautiful. And she's got some, um, some of the gold specialty paper on there as well. That's some of the new um, specialty designer series paper, that gold one, which is really beautiful. And it's got like a design, sort of like a, it looks, when you see the paper, it looks like it's gilded, like with gold gilding. It's really beautiful. If you haven't seen it in the catalog, check it out. It's beautiful. It's in the paper section at the back of the catalogue. So that was the first one. Then we've got um, this beautiful one from Dimity Foster. And Dimity's with us today, I think. she had. I saw her jump on earlier. This one's from Dimity and it's beautiful. And this one's got lots of dimension. I actually, it, um, some of the dimension um, got a little bit squashed, flattened, not squashed, but flattened in the post. And I haven't popped all of them back up, but I popped up some of them. But this is the um, the Pretty Pop-Ups die. And so Dimity has um, die cut that on vellum and then overlaid that over some of the Sun Prints DSP. I've got my little notes on the back here. Um, and she's used the Starry Sky in colour um, for, the, for the card base as well. And then what she's done is all those little pop-ups See if you can see some of that dimension if I hold it. Oh, actually, you know what? I think they got flattened a little bit again underneath the other cards. Um, so she's she has painstakingly um, coloured the little all the little pop-ups, which is awesome using Stampin' Blends. And um, she's done a really great job. It looks fantastic with all of those little bits. I'm just trying to pop them up as I talk to you. With all of those little bits popped up and coloured, it looks amazing. So I'm just trying to pop them up. Um, I'll see if I can show you. Can you see some of that dimension? So the dies in this one, they die cut sections of each of those little images. It doesn't cut it all the way through. So what it actually in effect just creates like a little pop-up. Well, that's why it's called pop-up dies. Is that what it's called? Pop-up? Yeah, pretty pop-ups. So you get all the little dimensions so the, the butterflies and the dragonflies look like they're, they're um, flying and the flowers pop up like you get that dimension. Really, really pretty. So doesn't that look great? I love the vellum over that Sun Prince um, designer series paper. It looks really pretty. And she's used some of the brand new um, In Colour ribbon as well, which is super cool. It's got a real metallic shine to it. Can you see that? Isn't that beautiful? I can't remember the name of the label, the um, dies that the label came from. That's a different one and I haven't got that written down. That's a different die set. Actually, I could have a look here because I'm just almost at that page and I can't remember which dies they are for those labels, but they're really pretty, those labels. That's from a different die set. I think that's one of the ones that I did. Oh, no, I didn't get that one. Um... Which one is that one from? Maybe, Dimity, are you on here? Can you tell us which die set that label was from? 
if she's still here with us. Um, let me see. Let me see. I'm looking in my cal my cal my. Cal I was going to say my cal calculator. Oh my goodness, my words today. It's been a big week. Um, hmm. I'm looking. I'm looking. I know I've seen them. It's one of the new sets. And oh, you know what? It's probably with the bundles. Ferns. Oh, was it with the um? It'll be in one of the bundles. Hang on, let me go back. I'll go back to the bundles because I think it's in one of the bundles. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Ah, it was part of the. Oh, is it that one? Yeah, it's actually part of the heron um, dyes from the heron habitat. Yeah, that's the. That's what that one is. Yeah. So it's from the heron dyes from the heron habitat, which is the same. Actually, it's the same dye as what was on um, roses. Oh no, it's a little bit different. So that one is from the same. Those two were those two labels. They're both from the heron dyes. So you've got sort of like a longer one and then a wider, shorter one. So and then there's other other dyes in that set as well. Yeah, yeah. So there you go really beautiful thank you so much for your card dimity that's gorgeous and i love how you colored all those um little details it really made them pop um all right so this next one is from amanda fitzgerald from my team so gorgeous i love this isn't it adorable um this is using the happy forest friends suite so she's used the the bundle and the designer series paper so she's got some of the designer series paper here and she's used the stamp set as well. And then she's got the 3D fern embossing folder. Sorry, the fern 3D embossing folder. I'll say it around the right way in the background. So can you see the, the fern there? It really looks really beautiful on the um, Calypso Coral. I love it. It looks great. And she's used um, Fabulous Friends dies as well, which is this one here so she's used lots of different products in there oh and she's used some of the new in color um uh embellishments as well i can't think what they're called i actually just gave my team i gave someone from my team um those as a prize on the weekend actually that's one thing i did on saturday is we had our team gathering which is awesome and one of our team members showed us how to make a really cool um fun fold card so i'll probably share that in the next couple of weeks I'm just finding my bling and I'll tell you which bling it is. It is the Fun Flowers Resin Shapes and they come in, see these little flowers? They're really cute. They come in the new in colors. So thank you so much for your card, Amanda. It's beautiful. So cute. I love that little bear and that little owl. They're really adorable. So there's another one for you. So lots of ideas. Hopefully you're getting lots of ideas today. Now this beautiful one is also, um, this one is from Robin, Robin Falang from my team. Really beautiful. Lots of beautiful colors in this one. This is using the Tea Boutique Suite. Um, she's used the bundle and so she's used the stamp set and die bundle and she's used the designer series paper as well. Um, and for the cardstock, she's used Starry Sky and Parakeet Party. So she's incorporated some in colors in there. So we've got the starry sky and the parakeet party. So isn't that beautiful? So it's so great. So these teacups are fantastic. And actually she's done a little technique on the teacup. I'll see if I can pick it up with the lights. Um, there we go. See how the teacup is shiny. So what she's done is she's die cut the teacup out of the designer series paper. And then she's stamped her Versamark all over it and then put clear embossing powder over the top of that and then heat set that to make the top, the, the cup look shiny like porcelain. Isn't that clever? She's explained to me how she did it. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? So you've got like a shiny teacup. Really, really pretty. And she's used some of the beautiful butterfly embellishments as well. I love them. They're one of my favorites. So beautiful card, Robin. Thank you so much. So many different great ideas, isn't there? All right, this one is from Beverly Peck, and Beverly um, has used the He's a Man Suite. 
So she's used the designer series paper, the bundle, so the stamps and dies, um, and she's also used the rustic metallic dots, which I love. I love these, they're gorgeous. So there's one down here and there's one up here and she's used them on the sentiment label. Sorry, again, I'm working backwards, so I'm trying to, <laughs> there we go. There's quite a few on here actually too. So how cool is that? Isn't that a great masculine card? Great card for Father's Day. Um, Cause of course it says wishing you a happy Father's Day, um, but just so cool. And I love that suite because um, I don't know if you've seen it yet in the catalog, you might not realize that with the designer series paper, you get 10 sheets of designer series paper and you get two sheets of die cut images um, that you can punch out. Um, she's actually used the stamps on this one, but you get um, punch outs that you can actually use instead of using, if, you, if you're not a, um, a stamper, you can actually use the punch outs to create the, the um, projects which is really cool with all your little, um, it's, there's some sentiments and there's little images and things like that that are all pre-die cut, pre-printed, pre-die cut for you. So it's really cool. So thanks so much for that one, Beverly. That's beautiful. Love that, great masculine card. Or great for, um, I mean, it says Happy Father's Day, but if you put a different sentiment, it would be great for anybody else who as well who enjoys um, camping, yeah, or traveling. So really cool. All right, so the next three that I've got are all using the beautiful Hedgehog, Happy Hedgehog bundle. And this is the one that I'm going to be using in my upcoming class, at which I mentioned the registration was um, tomorrow, Tuesday the 7th. So um, these are some cards that some of my team members have created using that same bundle. So this is uh, this card is made by Kat Brennan and Kat has used the Happy Hedgehog bundle and um, as I said this bundle is carrying over into the annual catalogue from the mini but it's only available at the um, bundled price with 10% discount at the moment till the end of June while the mini is still running and then after that you can still get them in the annual catalogue but they'll be available as individual products so that's the Happy Hedgehog stamp set and then the Hedgehog Builder Punch. So how cute is this little card? I love that the little bird, it looks like the little bird is bringing a flower to the hedgehog. <laughs> it's so cute. And she's used some of those little um, brushed brass butterflies as well, embellishments. Really cute card, Kat. And Kat has um, spent a lot of time as well doing all the um, coloring on all of the images. And she's done a little bit of um, blending in the background with her um, blending brushes as well to create a soft green for the grass and blue for the sky. So she's used a bit of technique in there as well. She's also used the punch for the, um, the hedgehog. So she stamped the hedgehog and then she stamped the hedgehog um, again. So she's used two different colors. I think this one is um, crumb cake or Sahara sand, might be Sahara sand. And then she's done the soft suede and then she's punched the this part out of the the punch separately and overlaid that to give him um, a two tone effect. Doesn't that look cool? So really beautiful. Thank you for your card, Cat. I love it. It's gorgeous. Now this one is from Julie Bartolo from my team. Julie has also used the Happy Hedgehog bundle. She's used the other hedgehog. So there's two different hedgehogs in the bundle. This one's a hedgehog that's facing the other way. And she's used, she's used some technique on here as well. So she's used the Happy Hedgehog stamp set carried over from the mini. And then she's used the, um, the new in color designer series paper, ink and baker's twine and the decorative dots all from in colors as well. So she's used quite a few of the new in color products, which is super cool. And on, on here, Julie's used a technique called direct to, uh, direct to stamp sorry, direct marker to stamp technique, which um, we did in Technique Club actually. And so she's used her stamp and write markers to color her stamp. And then you huff your breath onto it to moisten all the ink again. And then you stamp it. So you can get a multicolored stamped image. Isn't that cool? But wait, there's more. This is actually a fun fold card because look, you've got a pop out explosion as you open the card. Isn't that awesome? 
and she's used the In Colour Designer Series paper again. So isn't that cool? Very clever, Julie. Thank you very much for your card. It's beautiful. So she's done lots and lots of work on this one, lots of technique and made it into a fun fold. And we've even got some embossing, heat embossing up here as well. Um, and she's got dry embossing on the background. She's used lots of techniques. How many techniques? One, two, oh, too many. I can't even count them because she's done die cutting as well. And she's done coloring and she's done direct to marker and she's done fun fold. So many techniques in one card, Julie. That's so awesome. Well done. That must have taken you quite a, quite a while. I think everyone, it's taken everyone quite a while to make um, nine of the same card. And then this one, this beautiful one, is from Susan. Thank you so much, Susan, for your beautiful card. This is so cute and adorable. And Susan has also done a lot of colouring on this one. I know that Susan said that her hand got so tired from all the colouring on nine of these beautiful cards. Um, so she's used the Happy Hedgehog stamp set. Um, there, and she's used in colored ink, in color inks, and Tahitian tied ribbon. So this is one of the new in color ribbons in the Tahitian tied color. Um, and we had the which one was it? I think it's the Starry Sky that was on Dimity's. So there's two of the the in color ribbons, metallic ribbons. They're really pretty. They're all sparkly. I'm getting up my collection of those. I think I've got two of the colors so far. I've got to get it get some more. But how cute is this? And I love how she's used the um, the tree image. So Susan's used the tree image and she stamped it several times to be so that all the flowers are poking out from behind the, the focal image. Isn't that clever? So yeah, so really beautiful. Thank you so much for your card, Susan. It's beautiful. So didn't everyone do a great job with their swap cards? Do you love them? So awesome. We might even case some of those over the coming weeks. Um, but I'll share those. I'll share um, some photos of those. I'm just going to watermark them for everyone first, though. Um, so it might take a little bit of time to do that. But I'll share them over the next couple of weeks, most likely, um, once I get them watermarked for everybody with their, um, with their details on the, um, the photo. So, um, yeah. So that is really beautiful. And last... But not least is mine so let me take it out of the packet and I'll show you mine yes mine's coming Dimity <laughs> they are beautiful cards aren't they Rose everyone did such a great job yeah they're great aren't they Megan yep Megan says wow they're all great Mandy you have a very talented team I certainly do I'm very proud of my team they are they are beautiful people and they are all very talented as well all right so this is mine this um, is using the Wisteria Wishes. Hang on, I have to get my details out now to tell you. <laughs> I've made a lot of cards since this one. Um, so this is using the um, Wisteria Wishes bundle. So we've got the Wisteria Wishes um, stamp set and the bun and the dies as well to die cut all of the images. We've got the um, Brick 3D. Let me get the right name. The brick and mortar 3D embossing folder in the background to create the white brick wall. We've used um, some Versamark in the background. I'm actually going to show you how to make this one. So you'll have all of the details of mine shortly because we're going to make that together. But that was my one. So there you go. And this bundle is from the new catalog as well. So really beautiful. So there you go. So that is all nine cards in our, um, actually I'll leave mine out of the little baggie now because we'll get ready to create mine. So yeah, so um, really beautiful. Okay, so how about we get started? I will tip the camera down. Let me just move my catalog out of the way and uh, we'll get started. All right. Pop that over there, get myself all organized. There we go. So I got my new, um, not my new, well, it was new. I got my second desk put back in my room, in my craft room um, just this past week, which is great because it's given us so much more room to move around in here now. Um, the bed in here just took up a lot of space. And because I had the bed, I had an extra little small desk beside my big desk and it sort of encroached 
on my space. You probably used to see it over my shoulder, over this shoulder. Um, yeah, an extra little desk there. Or oh, actually, no, it was on this side. This side it was on this side. Yeah. Um, so it used to encroach on my space a fair bit, but now I've got my other desk. So now I've got my creative desk over here where I'm filming. And then I've got my business desk, as I call it, on the other side where I do all my computer work and paperwork. So, um, so it's really great. But it just means now I'm, I'm getting used to, again, where to place everything on my desk um, over here when I'm filming. So, yeah, because I don't have my extra little one beside me. All right, so how about I cover up um, the camera. We'll tip it down onto the desk and get started. Here we go. All right, I'm going to cover it up so I don't make you all dizzy or seasick or motion sick. All right, here we go. So I'll just get this ready for you. Just bear with me for a moment. Okay. Alrighty, so oh, let's see how that looks. There we go. Now, what I didn't mention was, oh, hang on, let's just see if we got that. Oh, I got it straight first go. Amazing. There we go. I'll just move these over a little bit. What I didn't mention is if you are not already a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would love to join our beautiful community of crafters where we have lots of fun together, lots of creative inspiration together um, and we make beautiful friendships then you are most welcome to come and join our team we would love to have you and we would love to welcome you um, and the other thing oh there's so many great things about being part of Stampin' Up but the friendships is is a special part of that um, but of course you will get an ongoing discount on all of your Stampin' Up products um, between 20 and 25 percent discount in fact on all of your beautiful Stampin' Up products so um, we also have events that we can attend if we choose to. There's special Stampin' Up! only events. I'm just grabbing out my grid paper while I'm talking to you. Um, we get access to brand new product early, as you heard me mention before, because we've already been able to order from the new catalogue, which hasn't been released yet. Um, so there's lots and lots of benefits of being part of Stampin' Up! And you get to meet people from all around the world as well which is super awesome i've made some beautiful friendships oh i can't put that back in there i've made some beautiful beautiful friendships um with people from all around the world which is super amazing um yeah just it's been amazing so if you would like more information about joining my team um then please feel free to get in contact with me and ask me all of your questions i'd love to answer them for you and there's no obligation you know in asking a question i have no expectation so just feel free to ask me um, any questions that you might have so that then you can make a decision if it might be the right decision for you okay all right so let's look at this beautiful card um i will show you i'll just move my grid paper up from under there for a moment while i show you all of the products that we're using all right so here is oh i'll move that over to the side oh thank you so much glenda Glenda said, beautiful card, love the colours. Thank you. I am very partial to purple. My bridesmaids were purple. Well, I was supposed to have four bridesmaids, two in purple and two in mauve, but my two purples both fell pregnant and were both eight months pregnant on the day of my wedding. So neither of them were able to be in the wedding party as it turned out um, because they were both too close to having their babies. And so it was a little bit risky. So I ended up just with two bridesmaids rather than two matrons of honor and two bridesmaids. And so we ended up going with the purple instead of the, um, the mauve because the mauve was a little bit softer. So we went with the brighter purple. So yes, I am very partial to purple and purple was also my mum's favorite color as well. So Oh, is it your favourite colour too, Glenda? Awesome. Ah, we are the purple people. <laughs> All right, so let's look at these beautiful products. So the Wisteria Wishes stamp set is super amazing. I just um, held a class on this and, uh, well, I'm about to. Hang on, what day is that class? Uh, yes, no, we did that one. Just trying to think. I'm losing track. Was that last month? Um, yes, it was last month the end of May, Wisteria Wishes class. We made three very different cards using the Wisteria Wishes because the Wisteria can be used for Wisteria. It can be used up the other way for different types of flowers in different types of, in different colors. Um, and then it can also be used as trees as well 
if you stamp them upside down, if you stamp them in green. So lots of different ways you can use them. You can add them onto these um, stalks to be trail stems, to be um, different types of flowers like snapdragons, foxgloves, things like that. You can have them hanging um, for wisteria. And then you've got the detail there as well. You've got a leaf, extra leaf there, and you've got some beautiful sentiments there as well. So I really love this stamp set, it's beautiful. And then of course you've got the coordinating dies. So you've got dies to cut out all of those pieces, all of those stamped images I should say. And then you've also got a couple of additional dies. So we've got the, um, the vine along the top here. And then you've got these leaves as well, which are in addition to the stamped leaves because you can cut out the stamped leaves, which is what we'll be doing. But you've got an additional one here and you've got additional wisteria here as well. And you've got two different sizes so you can overlay them cut them out in different colors and overlay them um, which is one of the ideas that we did in one of my classes so i tend not to show my my full images of my classes online to try and keep them exclusive just to my classes um but yeah i'll talk about them but um i won't actually be showing the full pictures of them so, okay, so that's what we're going to be using. We're also going to be using the bricks and mortar 3D embossing folder. We're going to be using the Label Me Fancy Punch for the label down here. Okay, this is a great one to have. It's a good staple to have in your, um, I'll put, pop that up the top here actually, so I can grab that in a minute. And we've got some bling. We are using our beautiful rhinestone basic jewels today, which are my favorite. I use them a lot. And let me show you the colors that we're going to be using. So if you um, would like to recreate this project, or as we call it, case, C-A-S-E, copy and selectively edit, you are very welcome to case this project. So we have got pear pizzazz. Soft Suede, Fresh Freesia and Highland Heather. Now don't look at the label of my Highland Heather for the true colour because the label is actually fading. So that's not actually what the colour looks like. Um, you'll see the colour when I stamp it. And we also have some um, Versamark ink as well. We're doing a little bit of um, watermarking in the background. Okay, so that's that. Now I need to... Um, Put my stamps onto some blocks i haven't done that yet so we'll do that quickly now i've got all my blocks out ready so i'll just peel this off oh the stamps are coming up with it that's okay that'll make it a bit easier for me to grab them so we need um a friend which one is it this one here a friend who's all kinds of wonderful so we'll pop that on our block okay so we've got our sentiment ready um, we need a big one for this, for the leaves. I've got my biggest block on the bottom, of course. Now, the leaves are um, pliable. Well, all of the photopolymer stamps are pliable, but because we want these to match up with the dies when we go to do the die cutting, what we're going to do, um, we don't want to accidentally bend this out of shape. We want it to be in its natural form so that it'll fit within the die. So if we just put it down on some paper, let it relax into its natural shape and then take the block to the stamp. So I've got it face down as if you're going to stamp it, okay? So that when you pick it up, it's picking up on the flat side of the, the stamp, okay? So that's just a little tip there for you. All right, what else do we need? Our wisteria. So we'll do the same with these because these are also going to be die cut. So pop them down on the paper. And let's just make sure I'm fitting them onto my block. There we go. Um, we've got the single wisteria as well. So that's going to be our detail. And I think that's it. I think they're the only ones we need today. All right, pop them back in the case. And we'll put that over to the side out of the way. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is, well, I'll bring in my kit first and we'll, I've got all my little pieces already prepared 
Amber always prepares all my kits for me, or most times she prefer prepares on the rare occasion I do them myself, but usually she has them all prepared for me. Um, so she's got all my pieces already cut for me, which is awesome. So I'll take them all out. And I will give you the measurements as we go through as well so that you can recreate this project if you would like to. All right, so first of all, we have our card base of Fresh Freesia. So this is half of a piece of A4 cardstock and it measures 21 centimetres by 14.85 centimetres and it's scored and folded at 10.5. Now, anybody who might be watching this from overseas, I only give the measurements in centimetres or in um, metric measurements because our cardstock base is actually a different size to the US um, and Canada. Uh, so they use letter size, which is a different size. We use A4 size cardstock. So when our sheets, we get our full sheets, they come in A, uh, sorry, A4. So when we cut them in half, that creates A5. Um, and so we're starting with a different size card base. Um, Australian or metric card bases, Australia and Europe actually use this size. Um, ours are narrower and taller. The American and Canadian ones are shorter and wider okay so all of the measurements would be different so i'm basing it on the australian metric measurements okay just as an explanation if anyone's wondering why i only give sentiment centimeter measurements um okay so then we have a piece of soft suede and our soft suede piece is 13.85 centimeters by 9.5 centimeters then we have a piece of basic white, which we're going to emboss the, the bricks onto. Um, and this is 13.45 centimetres by 9.1 centimetres. We've got a piece of um, basic white, which we're going to stamp our um, two lots of wisteria onto. And this one is 14.85 by 6.5 centimetres. We've got another piece for the leaves. And this one is nine centimeters by six centimeters. And then we've got a piece of pear pizzazz. Now, if you're not catching all these measurements as I go, don't worry, I'll be putting up the recording. You can always rewind and write down the measurements later. Okay, so don't panic if you're not catching them as I go. Um, the pear pizzazz is 10.5 by four centimeters. And then this piece here is for our vine and it's 14.85 centimeters by 1.5 and this is also soft suede okay so there are all of our pieces so we're going to start with our base I'm going to pop the card over to the side out of the way so I don't get ink on it actually let me just move that block oops there we go and I'll pop that up there and we're going to start with our Versamark ink and we're starting with our little single um, wisteria this one is actually the one that creates the detail on the wisteria but we're using this just as a standalone for the moment on our base and we're going to create a little border so we're using our versamark ink and i hope this is the good one i hope this is the oh yeah this is the new one i've got to re-ink my other one i keep forgetting i should get that out actually i've got to re-ink that i'll leave that out so i remember to do it all right so what we're going to do is we are going to use this and create a border. So I'm starting up in the upper corner, it doesn't matter which corner you start in, uh, but I'm gonna start up in this corner and I'm gonna line the edge of my wisteria along the edge as best as I can, along the edge of my card. And I'm gonna stamp it in one direction, then I'm gonna re-ink it, turn my stamp around and stamp it in the other direction and kind of line it up so you're creating almost like a rectangle. Line it up with the first stamp. So you're going to continue doing that all the way down the card, which will give you the, um, the border. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Like you can, you can actually do two at a time if you wanted to, make it quicker and then turn it around and do the other two up the other way. They don't have to be perfect because you are going to cover up most of that. You're just going to see the edge. Oh, I missed a little bit just there. Let's just fill in. There we go. Okay, so I'll do the other side as well. So I'll start with the wider part at the top because that's how I did the other side. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to just do each of these down 
the edge first and then I'll turn it around and do the other ones going up the other way. Whoops, I have to go back and fix that one. That's all right. Was rushing. I'll just add a little bit more at the bottom here just to fill that in a bit. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. Now we'll go along the top doing the same thing. I'll just keep going along this way first and then I'll turn it. Okay, so turn it around and go back the other way. And it doesn't matter if you stamp it deep down onto the card because most of that part of it is actually going to be um, covered up anyway. I think I missed a little bit in there. That's okay. And up there. There we go. Well, let's just fill in a little bit there on the edges. We'll do the same down the bottom here. So I bet you had never thought of, um, oh, maybe you had thought of using the tree as a background sort of splatter. Well, it's not a tree. Well, it can be a tree. You can use it as a tree or you can use it as the, uh, the wisteria. There you go. I always think of it as a tree. I don't know why. It kind of when you're using it singly like that, if you hold it up that way, it kind of does look like a tree. There we go. So we've created a, a nice little um, watermarked border there. Now we'll give that one a clean on our Simply Shammy. If you haven't watched me before, I love my Simply Shammy. Um, it's a great cleaning tool and you just basically add water to it. Um, you give it a good rinse out each week or depending on how often you're um, crafting and it cleans your stamps up beautifully. Now it doesn't clean... Um, stays on ink though if you're using stays on ink you have to use a special stays on ink cleaner and i use my simply uh, my stamp and scrub for that um, and then once i've done that then i give it a final clean just with my chamois to wash off any of the um, other cleaning solutions but if you're just using um, water-based inks or um so our our memento or our classic stampin um pads then the chamois is um, great for cleaning. So we have the chamois, we have the um, Stampin' Scrub, we have the Stampin' Mist, and then for stays on, we have the special stays on cleaner. So there's a few different types of cleaners there depending on what you're using. Oh, you love Lilac Ju Judy? Yeah, I love all of the purple tones right through from Lilac right through to um, the deep purples. They're just really beautiful. All right, so that's our card base. So we're gonna set that aside. And we'll go ahead and do the rest of our stamping. So we'll do our leaves next, which is, oh, let's do our sentiment next. I always do the sentiment next, don't I? Usually the sentiment is the first thing I stamp. And sometimes I forget, but that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna use soft suede ink and we're gonna stamp to a friend who's all kind of wonderful. I think that's a really lovely sentiment. Now, let me work out before I do that, I'm gonna work out which way this is gonna feed into my punch. So I'll just open the button on my punch just by sliding that up and that opens up my punch. So this is gonna go in, okay, that way. All right, so I'll punch it towards the end. Okay, now, actually one thing I didn't do is because I'm using photopolymer stamps and I should have had this under already and I forgot I'm going to use my stamp and pierce mat it's like a, um, a piece of foam and it just gives you a much nicer stamped um, image so if you pop that underneath your grid paper it's a good idea to use grid paper or scrap paper to protect your work surface when you're stamping and especially as you saw um, with me creating the border I was stamping off the edges a little bit so it's a good idea just to um, to do that. But yeah, um, we'll put our stamp and pierce mat under there, which will give us a much nicer um, stamped image. And we'll just stamp that in the middle. Beautiful. Good. Stamp off the excess ink and then give a clean on our chamois. Now your chamois will get stained up. As you can see, mine is, is quite stained. I keep the other side 
nice and clean or fairly clean until this side gets super, super grotty. And then um, I'll flip it over and use the other side. But as so long as you rinse out that surface ink, the staining will not affect how it cleans and it won't affect your stamps. Okay, so you don't need to be worried um, about any staining that you might get on it. Okay, so now let's punch that straight away. So I'll take that into my punch, line that up. Let's get that straight. There we go. There we go. Nice. Good, that punched beautifully. All right, so we've got our sentiment label ready to go. Okay, next we're going to stamp our leaves. And I'm going to use the um, Pear Pizzazz ink pad for that. Okay, so we're going to tap, tap, tap our leaves onto our ink pad. Get that nice and inky. Beautiful. And then we're just going to stamp that. Turn my paper around a little bit. Uh, let's see. There like that. Give that a nice firm press. Now this is a distinctive stamp set. So this stamp set um, has a different shadings um, or, or what they call opacities built into the stamp. So you'll see lots of details. It looks like it's already got shadow and shade and different tones in there, which I love because it makes our job so much easier because it looks like we've done a technique where we've... Um, you know, created those different shadings with, within our stamping, but actually Stampin' Up! have done all the hard work for us because they built it into the stamp itself. So that's super cool. So we give that a little clean on our chamois till it's nice and squeaky clean. And then I always like to test it on scrap paper to make sure I got it clean. I did, but I missed a little bit of ink. I over inked there onto my block. So I'll just wipe that off with my chamois. There we go. Good. So that, that one's nice and clean now. It's always a good idea to clean your stamps as you go um, so that you don't leave the ink sitting on them. Now we'll pop this one aside. We're going to die cut that, but we're going to pop that aside for the moment. Yeah, so clean them as you go because you don't want to leave the ink on them, especially with the photopolymer because they stain up really easily. Um, and so you don't want to leave any ink sitting on them. You want to clean them straight away. All right, now with our to create our um, freesias, oh, our Yes, wisterias, not freesias. I'm stamping in freesia. We're creating wisteria, both flowers, but yeah, confusing. All right, we're creating wisterias. We're going to stamp first in our fresh freesia and then the detail or that single stamp we're going to then stamp in the Highland Heather so that we create that sort of two-tone of the wisteria. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that. All right, so we're stamping first in fresh freesia. And we need two sets of these. So we have to make sure we, we leave room for two sets of those. So we're just going to tap, tap, tap a few times on our stamp pad. And make sure we leave enough room to get our dies around. There we go. So there's our first one. And our second lot. Okay, good. So we'll close that one up. Tap off the excess ink, give that one a quick clean. There we go. And then with our, our single freesia, the one that we were using for the border on the um, card base, we're going to use Highland Heather. And we're going to stamp this one inside each of these or on top of each of these um, flowers. There we go. And see how you got that beautiful detail now? And it doesn't matter. These are really easy to line up. You can see through the photopolymer stamp, um, but because they are wisteria and because of the design of them, it doesn't matter if it's not lined up perfectly. There we go. So see how easy that was? Super easy. All right, that is all our stamping done. So we'll give this one a clean. Again, with the um, the distinctive stamp, you can see there you've got the different um, different tones in there, even though we also have added to that because we've stamped two colours, one on top of the other. 
So there we go. All right, so that's all our stamping. Now we'll bring in a stamp and cut and emboss machine. I'm bringing in my big machine today because we need, we're using a large embossing folder. So we need the big machine um, and we're gonna do our die cutting as well. So let's bring that in. I've got it right here on my trolley today. I'm just gonna turn it around. So this one's a bit harder to fit on camera um, because it's so big. So let me just move the trays over here. You might get a little bit of reflection from the plate. So I apologize for that in advance. Um, so there you go. So you can see the large stamp and cut and emboss machine. We do have our mini machine as well. The mini machine takes uh, has a wider feeding, uh, sorry, a narrower feeding mouth to this one. This is the, the standard machine. The mini one has a narrower feeding mouth um, and it fits, it would fit these dies, um, but it won't fit the embossing folder that we're using today. So that's why we're using the big machine today. But we're going to start with our die cutting first. So let's, okay, so we're taking this piece of um, soft suede and we're going to die cut the vine and we'll do some other die cutting at the same time. So I'll open up my wisteria dies. I haven't put these ones on magnetic sheets yet. I like to put them on magnetic sheets. And these ones have been used a few times, so they're starting to come off there. All right, so we're going to use the vine. Now, uh, let me tell you too, I'll just grab some washi tape to hold this down. Uh, you may have seen me post the other day, but um, Stampin' Up! had recently released a brand new magnetic plate. Um, unfortunately, they've had to take it back off the market again because unfortunately it was not performing um, to their expectations. They had done rigorous testing on it, but um, as demonstrators started to use it and use it multiple times over and over and over for, for um, classes and things like that, there started to be a bit of a problem with it. And because Stampin' Up! has such high, um, high uh, expectations of their product, uh, it wasn't meeting that because it was showing a few faults so unfortunately, they've had to pull it again. Um, and that is indefinite now. So we're not sure if it'll come back at some stage or if it will, when that would be. So we are going back to using washi, washi tape or post-it notes or something like that to hold your pieces down or to hold your dies, I should say, onto your um, pieces to line them up. Um, but yeah, it's a Stampin' Up! are very sad about it because they they had really worked hard to... Uh, and they thought they had it. They thought they had had a product that was um, going to perform really well. But um, yeah, unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way. So everyone's very sad about that. But that's okay. Washi tape works. You just have to be a little bit more patient with it. That's all. All right. So we'll just get that nicely lined up. There we go. Oops. No, that's not quite right. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay, line that up. I've been using washi tape for years anyway, so it's not such a biggie for me. All right, so we've got two lots of wisteria here, but we can only die cut one at a time. So I'm going to actually, let me grab the right scissors. I'm going to cut these in half so that I'm not running both of them through the machine at the same time, because we've got to cut them one at a time. And I don't want the other piece to get um, damaged or dented as it goes through the machine. So we'll just do one at a time. We'll line these up. There we go. Oh, I only just lined that one up well, didn't I? It's almost off the bottom of the page. Or the bottom of the, the, the um, cardstock there. So does anybody have this set already? Does anybody have this bundle? Have you been using it? Let me know in the comments if you already have. I'd love to hear what you've been making. Have you made some cards or have you made something else? All right, there we go. So now we'll put our, um, our other clear plate on top and then we'll take that through the machine. There we go. Okay, so let's wind that through. Oops, have I got that? I haven't got that straight. There we go. All right, so we'll wind that through. I'm going to just stand up for a minute. Dimity says, no, haven't got this one. I feel like I'm doing this back to front. I'm winding it backwards because <laughs> I'm doing it the opposite way. 
normally I have it in front of me and I'm normally operating it with my right hand and cranking it. What way do I crank it? Away from me. But yeah, doing it sideways is a little bit different. So that's all good. All good. So Dimity hasn't got this one. Anybody else? Um, oh, Glenda says, have you had a problem with the new magnetic plate yet? No, I didn't actually buy it, Glenda. So, oh, hey, Brenton, how are you going? Great to have you with us. Didn't see you jump on there. How are you? Um, yeah, no, I didn't actually, I hadn't actually purchased it yet. I was sort of um, holding off a little bit. And, um, yeah, I'm kind of glad I didn't now because, oh, that's what I was going to say. Anybody that did purchase it, whether or not you're a demonstrator or a customer, you will be receiving a refund from Stampin' Up! for the purchase of that plate. So you don't need to return the plate if you have it and if you're still using it, that's okay. If you do find that the um, sections of the plate start to separate, stop using it because it could damage your machine and you certainly do not want that. So um, yeah, so if you see any faults arising from it, just um, straight away stop using it, but just know that you will receive a refund from Stampin' Up. Um, they said that the refunds might take a few weeks because they've got a lot a lot of them to refund. Um, and obviously, you know, it, I guess it's got to go through their finance people or whatever. Um, I don't know the details about that part of it, but um, yeah. So just watch your bank account for that. Okay, so we've got a vine there. And we've got our beautiful wisteria. And we've got one more wisteria to cut out. So let's bring in our other set. There we go. But yeah, it was very sad. I was looking forward to having the magnetic plate. Everyone was so excited about it. And yeah, just wasn't performing as it should. So very sad. But... You know, Stampin' Up, it's good that Stampin' Up has pulled it because um, they don't want to be selling inferior products because they have, you know, they pride themselves on quality products and if something's not performing as it should, then, um, you know, they, they don't want to be selling it because that's not, um, you know, that's not what they're about. So there we go. All right, so let's put that in. All right. Let's try with the other hand this time. That's working a bit better. There we go. All righty. Um, oh, it's on your list, Deborah. Fantastic. Oh, Judy says it's on her list as well. Great. Oh, good. Well, I hope that the card that I'm making today will give you some more ideas. Um, Julie said, just looking at those wisteria, you could stamp in a different color, such as balmy blue. And they could be icicles. Oh, that's another great idea. Yes. For our winter card challenge. Yes. So our team this month, I have set them a new creative challenge. Every month I set a new creative challenge for those that want to participate. And our theme for June is winter themed cards or winter themed projects. It doesn't have to be a card. It can be a 3D project as well. And um, yeah, you're right, Julie. Oh, well, there you go. Well, I look forward to seeing what you create, Julie, if you're going to enter this month. There we go. Okay, so there's our second lot of wisteria. So we've done all of our die cutting. So we'll pop the dies away and we will um, get out our embossing and we'll do that now. I'm just going to pop my dies straight back into the packet. So many times I see... and I. So just for you to do this too, I'm going to actually, I'm just going to chuck them in the packet because I'm going to put them on a magnetic sheet before I use them again. That's my goal. I'm just going to chuck them in there. Um, so many times I see people posting pictures of individual lost dies and asking the question, please someone, do you know where this die belongs? Which die set does it belong in? Um... So I always tell everyone, put your dies away straight away so that you don't lose them. <laughs> so you've got your whole set together. All right, so we're going to be using the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. So we're going to need to change up our plates here. So we need our, and in case you didn't know, on your base plate, there's actually instructions for the different types of things you can do with the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And it shows you how to put together your plate sandwich, as we call it. So you'll always know which order to put your plates in. 
Okay, we need our grey number four plate because this one is for using with 3D embossing folders. So we need our base plate. Then we're going to put our cardstock in there and our die. Uh, sorry, our cardstock and our embossing folder. And then on top, we're going to be putting our number four plate. All right, so we'll get that one ready. There's our embossing folder and here is our cardstock. So we're gonna pop that in. Now we want the bricks to go lengthways across horizontally. So we'll pop it in that way. Make sure I've got that straight because we're doing bricks and bricks are pretty straight. So we want that to be straight. There we go. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna pop that on the base. Then we're gonna pop our cards, uh, um, sorry. So the cardstock is in the folder. The gray plate goes on top. And then we're gonna just take that through. And there shouldn't be too much resistance. Oh, maybe a little bit of a pop at the end, but not too much resistance. If you have to feel like you're forcing something through, don't do it, because you might break your machine. There we go. It might just mean that you've got your plates, um, your plates in the wrong um, sandwich. It also might mean, I had one on the weekend. There, doesn't that look great? Doesn't that look awesome? I love that brick background. Um, I had one on the weekend. I was trying to use some old plates that were really badly warped and I was really trying to crank them through and it just would not go. And in the end, I thought, no, nah, I'm going to break my machine. So I stopped. Um, I took it out. I put... Um, some new plates on and then it went through beautifully like this one that I'm using here this one as you can see this one's a really really old one it's quite cut up it's starting to bow so very soon I'm going to have to replace this one so that I don't damage my machine um, but this one is a fairly new plate I only just opened this one on the weekend so all right so that's it for all our die cutting and embossing so we've got that all ready so we've got all of our pieces now to put together our card. Alrighty, so here's all our bits and pieces. Put all of those there. Okay, now the first thing we need to do before we adhere this piece to this piece, we're going to add, so let's pop those to the side and I'll bring in my grid paper again, just to protect from any glue. Um, we're going to add one of the wisteria pieces and the vine on first because we're going to be doing a little bit of trimming. So I'm going to use my uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. Oh, I'm missing a few comments. Hang on a sec. Let me just go back and read them. Um, oh, Judy says, yeah, absolutely agree to pull it from sale. Yes, if it's not performing well, that's correct. Yeah, Stampin' Up! have a very high um, uh, expectation of their products. So yeah, so that's really good. Um, Oh, the magnetic plate was on your list, not the wisteria. Okay, but yes, wisteria is on your list too. Okay. <laughs> oh, so, well, sorry that you're missing out on the magnetic plate, but um, I did too. Yeah, I just hadn't got it yet, but I'm glad I held off now. So, but that's okay. Washi tape works well too. Or you can use post-it notes. Um, Dimity says, I love this set, but I love so many. Um, yeah, it's hard to know which ones to buy first, isn't it, Dimity? I know, right? There's so many beautiful products. So we just have to um, watch our wish list and just, uh, you know, just a little bit at a time. And don't forget, this is from the annual catalog. So you've got a whole year to purchase these products. So there's no rush. Just trying to get a little bit more glue out without making it ooze too much. There we go. You've got a whole year of this catalog. So um, yeah, you've got plenty of time to get it. So don't worry. You'll get there. All right, so I'm gonna pop this one up here. This one's just gonna overlap a little bit at the top. There, I want that right at the top there. And then I'm gonna pop the vine across that one. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue here and there. Now this, doing the um, dabbing glue technique would be good on this one, or you could use your fine tip glue pen too, but I'm going to just do little dabs of this multi-purpose liquid glue just for, ease and time. Just add a few little bits here and there. Now I'm probably going to be um, trimming off the ends a little bit because I think this is going to be a bit wider than 
the actual piece. Oops, got a bit much there. I'll try and spread that out a little bit. So otherwise that's going to ooze. We don't want any oozy glue. There we go. Um, yeah, so you can use a, a sponge with your multi-purpose liquid glue and dab it on the background. That's another um, technique. I've shown that a few times. Probably haven't shown it for a while. I probably need to show that again. All right, so we're just going to um, adhere this along the top here, just down a little bit from the top actually. There we go. We'll have that going across the top there. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to use my glue scissors, my sticky my sticky scissors, just so I don't get sticky on my good scissors. And I'm going to turn that over and I'm just going to trim up those extra little bits that overhang. Okay, we don't want any, any little hanging bits. So we just need to trim off just a little bit and just a little bit of those wisteria as well at the top there. There we go. So now they're all flush with the border. And now this piece can go onto the soft suede piece and then we'll um, do the rest of the card. Okay. Alrighty. So let's see. Did I miss any other comments? Um, oh, Glenda said, oh, you get magnetic sheets from... The cheap shop, yep, and cut them in half just the right size for the stamp cases where you store your dies. Oh, cool. So you store your dies in your stamp cases with your stamp sets. That's another really good idea. Um, I've seen some, a lot of people do do that, actually. Um, yeah, I buy my A4 magnetic sheets to keep my dies on just from um, eBay, and they come in A4 sheets as well. And then I just cut them down, and I keep them in my little um, packets that the dies come in. Because I keep, I've got a die cutting station or a die cutting trolley actually. So I keep all of my dies in there. Because I'm often using the labels from the dies in other projects. So I like to keep them all out handy where I can easily see them all. Um, but everyone's different how they, how they like to store their um, different items, the different crafting items. It's great. It's great to get lots of different ideas, though, because different things work for different people, and sometimes it depends on your storage area that you have, too. So, yeah, I like that idea, though. That's a good idea. All right, so now we'll adhere this to the card base. All right, make sure that we're opening the card in the right orientation. And we're going to pop this down on our beautiful Fresh Freesia card base. Make sure I've got that lined up. There we go. Okay, push that all down nice and firm. And the rest of what we're going to do is going to be popped up on dimensionals. Oh, Deborah's got another idea for storage. She transfers her dies into stamp cases with magnetic sheets. There you go. They're easier to find on the shelf. Ah, there you go. That works for you. Well, that's great. That's a great tip. Fantastic. Um, mine I usually have like this in the, this is how I store mine when I put them on the magnetic sheet. I just keep them in the packet. I actually turn them so that the dies are facing the front and the, the do up, the flap, the do up as I call it, um, is on the back and I have the name of it on the back there but what I'm going to start doing I did it with one the other day and I thought oh it makes it so much easier to see the names um let's see if I can find it here I can't remember which one it was now I did it with one and I thought oh I need to do that with all of them I made a label and I put the label on the front here as well so I don't have to keep on flicking them over to see the um the name on the back but I can actually just see it on the front there so I'm going to go through and do that all with my dies as well and add them there and then I just store them in tubs in my um I'll show you if I can get them out oops this is how I do mine I've got mine in Ikea tubs so I've got two tubs I've got one um with all the narrower packets and then I've got another one with the wider packets the more square packets and they stack in the opposite way they stack sort of across ways um and my embossing folders are in the back of the one that has the the wider squarer packets but yeah and then I just have them on my trolley you've probably seen them in the background often 
um, when I've been filming. And oh, you know, I just found two. Oh, I'll show you in a sec. Hang on a minute. Let me just put these back in my trolley. Got my trolley right beside me today. This is my die cutting embossing trolley. And I had to pull it over to me today because I needed to use it. Oh, here's another idea instead of washi tape, blue painter's tape. I put this actually in this, in my die cutting tray, but it was hiding because it was in between my two tubs. But yeah, this is something else that you can use. This is the painter's tape that they use on the wall when they're doing um, painting and it comes off easily. So that's another thing that you can use if you've got any old painter's tape laying around. You can use that to hold your dies, uh, your dies on your stamped images to go through your machine as well. So that's another idea. I should leave that out here actually so I see it. Okay, so yeah, thanks for sharing all your ideas, everybody. If anyone's got any other ideas, keep sharing them. Oh, Deborah said you can get four empty stamp cases from Stampin' Up! in the annual catalogue. Oh, yes, you can. Thank you, Deborah. Um, in the annual catalogue... In the, oh, let's see, what section are they in now in the new catalogue? I think it's probably in one of the tools sections towards the back. If you know what page it's on, feel free to let us know, Deborah. Um, but yes, Dampen Up sells the blank um, stamp cases. And so they make really good storage options. There they are. They're on page 149. And they come in a pack of four. Um, so it's the standard um, storage case, standard stamp case is what they're called. And they're $15 for a pack of four. And they are a great storage solution. I use um, the stamp cases to store a lot of my stuff in actually. Especially the old ones they used to have when they had the wide cases. I still use them to store all my embellishments in and my ink refills and things like that. So hopefully they'll bring back the wide cases one day. All right. Um, when Deborah said when she has both the stamps and the dies, she stores the dies with the stamps. Yep, like Glenda said, and the stamps with a matching punch, she puts a spot sticker on. Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Sounds like you've got a really good system there, Deborah. That's awesome. All right, so we are going to um, mount up the leaves with some Stampin' Dimensionals. So I might use some minis for this, and I got a new packet out too today because this one is nearly empty. And I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough. So there we go. Yeah, lots of great, lots of great tips today, guys, for your storage solutions. Thanks for sharing those. It might help some other people that are. Um, I think like lots of us are looking, often looking for um, new storage ideas. I have to cut some of these down a little bit thinner, I think. There we go. Especially as we get more craft stuff, hey? Because we we very quickly run out of room to store things. There we go. So I'm going to use some of these little edge pieces to cut narrow little pieces. Oh, I've got one there. Um, to use for my stem. So I'll get that one on there. There we go. And I might put another one there. So I'm just cutting really narrow pieces. Make sure that you do use the edge pieces of your stamp and dimensionals um, because they are great for when you need just a very small, thin piece for finer detail um, project or finer detail on your projects. They're great. There we go. Good. Okay. So we'll remove all of the, the backings from those. So our Stampin' Dimensionals come in two sizes. It's basically just mounting foam and they're um, double-sided adhesive. So they come with backing paper on the opposite side. So when you put them on, they're not sticky to begin with on that side. You have to peel off the backing paper. Well, they are sticky on that side, but they have the backing paper to protect them. And then you just peel that off and then you've got a 3D um, sticker, basically. There we go. Let's get rid of those little bits in a moment. All right, did I get all my stickers off the back? Yep, there we go. All right, so we're going to pop this up here. Actually, we can move that now because we've finished doing all our gluing. 
and we're going to pop this up here and we want we're going to hang our wisteria so we have to make sure that that's going to be i might just lay them there so i can sort of line that up a little bit to see where that's going to hang around about there there we go and then these wisteria we're going to pop those up onto dimensionals as well so let's just keep using these edge pieces and i'm just going to cut a whole heap of sections and we'll use them up there we go because nobody's going to see the back so it doesn't matter how messy the back looks nobody's going to see that part so long as they can't see them from the front that's all that matters There we go. Good. All right. And now we'll remove the backings, the paper backings from those dimensionals. I usually use my take your pick tool for these, but I'm actually holding this up in the air today. I, and um, when I use my take your pick tool, I usually have them down on the desk. But I don't want to use my take your pick tool when I'm holding it because I'm likely to stab my finger. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to line up. We've got these little hanging down bits. These are the, um, the stems. From the wisteria so we're just going to line them up with those stems and just hang them over the top like that there we go and we've got our sentiment we're going to pop that up onto dimensionals as well so we'll use some of these pieces that we cut oh i'll try and get that bit off the backing there maybe i didn't cut that one all the way through did i oh i missed a corner I missed a little corner there we go Let's just put, I'm just going to put four. Good. All right, let's, I'll show you the take your pick method. A lot of you have probably already seen me do this. So you just stick it in to the backing paper and you kind of do a flick. Okay, and you lift it off. It's a really easy and quick method of getting the um, backing papers off, especially when you've got lots of dimensionals on your projects. That's a, a quick method. And also, too, if you've got um, acrylic nails, sometimes it's hard to get the backings off. All right, so then we're just going to pop our sentiment down here. Beautiful. And now let's add our bling. So we don't have ribbon on this card, but we don't need it because we've got a vine instead. So the vine is sort of, that would probably be, probably be where I would normally put a ribbon. Um, but yeah, we've got the vine instead. So we don't need, because you all know I love ribbon and bling on all of my cards. <laughs> but today we don't have any ribbon but that's okay I'm okay with that today all right so we're going to pop some of these beautiful um, rhinestone basic jewels these are one of my favorites and they go with just about everything so I just think that they are so versatile and so easy to use there you go now if you wanted to from there you could add some wink of Stella to your um, wisterias if you want them to be a little bit sparkly just remember though we have stamped these so if we add a little bit of wink of stella we don't want to mix it around too much because it might start to blend the colors a little bit so you just have to be careful how you use it um, when you've stamped especially when you've got two tones like that like we've done um, so just be careful I think on my first one there's my original and there's the one we made today so on the original I didn't do it either but if you wanted to add wink of stella you certainly could um, on that project so there you go what do you think do you love it oh thank you thanks Megan Megan said beautiful card thanks Megan so really easy to put together actually wasn't it it wasn't too hard at all because we had the stamps and the dies and we just used the uh, embossing folder in the background we had a little bit of technique here with the um, the watermark technique using our Versamark um, but yeah, pretty easy to put together. But how beautiful is it? It goes to show that you don't need to be too fussy with your projects. If you've got the tools, um, then, you know, if you've got a die cutting machine, a stamp and cut and emboss machine, um, it does make it really easy. Now with the mini machine, if you didn't have the large machine, but you had the mini machine, there are narrow um, embossing folders specially made for the mini machine. And if you didn't have that particular brick 
um, one and the brick one won't fit through the mini machine. You could use another one. Um, we have, I'm just seeing what I've got in my tub here because some of them have been pulled out and are put in my class tubs. But there are lots of different embossing folders. You can see this one is a lot narrower than the one I used today. This is the one I used today. So you can see the size difference. There's actually three different sizes in embossing folders. So we've got the big um, 3D embossing folders, which are the big square ones. Then you've got some narrower 3D embossing folders, and there's also some standard embossing folders that are the same size as this one, but not 3D. And then you've got the minis. So you've got the three different sizes. The minis are the ones that go through the mini machine, the other, and they will go through the large machine as well, or the standard machine, but these two, you need the big machine. Okay, so if you just have a mini, just look out for the, the mini die cutting um, uh, embossing folders. Um, and you will see in the catalog, you'll actually see a little icon next to those that shows you that they will go through the mini machine. I'll actually quickly just show you um, so that you know what I mean. So here's the mini machine here on page 157. And can you see how there's the little mini icon there? On all of the things that go with the mini machine or well, actually we don't have the um, we don't have the magnetic plates now but yeah everything else and then you've got your bundles through here and even on your bundles if they fit through the if the dies are going to fit through the mini machine you'll see the little mini icon there and the same see how that's there and then when you get so these are all the bundles that you see first in the catalog you move, move that over and then you get to the standalone or the individual um, embossing folders and they will have the mini icon as well okay so you always know what's going to fit through the mini machine just look for that little icon in your fold in your um look there's all these ones lots of the dies will fit through the mini machine um, and even some of the other sets that sets that aren't labeled as being compatible with the mini machine some of those dies will go through the machine, but the largest ones of those, for instance, the layering circles, most of those circles will fit through the mini machine, except the very largest one won't fit through. So if you're still using the smaller ones, mostly, you can still use them with the mini machine. Um, and then when you get to the embossing folder, you'll see the same thing. So here's all the embossing folders and see you've got the little mini icons there for the mini machine embossing folders okay so you'll always know which one will fit and anything that fits through the mini machine will go through the large machine too all right so that's just a little bit about the stamp and cut and emboss machine for you so there you go so that is our project for today oh great inspiration thank you so much deborah that's lovely of you to say rose said lovely looks lovely thank you um Thank you for showing us how to make your card. Oh, you're very welcome, Deborah. I hope that that has given you some inspiration. And if you make this card too, I would love to see it. Feel free to share, uh, share with me your um, photos of your card. Um, oh, you're welcome, Megan. Thank you, Glenda. Fantastic. All right, well, I'm going to tip the camera back up to my face so that I can say goodbye to you face to face because you all know I always love to do that. I think it's polite as well, but I also like to, um, I feel like I'm sort of looking right at you, even though I can't see you. Oops, hang on. Before I do that, let me cover you up. I'm going to make you dizzy. <laughs> um, I do like to do that because I think that that's just, I feel like I'm looking at you, even though I can't see you, but you can see me. All right, so here we go. Flippity flip and adjust my lights. Okay, so bear with me one moment. There we go. Sorry, just fixing up those lights. There we go. Okay, so there's our beautiful card today. And we did it. We got through it. So obviously this morning... I wasn't sure if I would film my live today, and you all understand why. If you saw the beginning of my um, my live today, you will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and if you didn't, 
go back and rewind and watch the beginning. Um, but yeah, I did it. I made it. And thank you all so much for being with me and giving me a good distraction, which I needed today. <laughs> so I hope you all have a really fantastic week. Thank you all so much for joining me. It's been great to have you. Um, remember that if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would love our new catalogue, so we've got the annual catalogue and we've got our new mini catalogue and celebration coming out. And my catalogue's just arrived today. My new, my, my new bundle, I have already sent out to my regular customers. I have already, well, I haven't sent them out, but I've ordered them to be sent out direct from Stampin' Up. Um, plus, I ordered some additional ones to have at home as well for anyone that I might be handing them out to in person or um, popping in the mail later. So if you would love a copy of these, please let me know. I would love to send them to you. And if you would like more information about joining my beautiful team of um, our beautiful crafting community, feel free to get in contact with me. Ask me any questions that you like um, so that you can then make the decision if it's the right choice for you. But we would love to welcome you to our beautiful community. But until next week, next Monday, um, I'll say goodbye. Now, as I said, I might be jumping on later this week to do an unboxing of those new products, but we'll see how the week goes. I won't make any promises. Might keep them till next Monday. Hmm, we'll see. <laughs> but I look forward to seeing you next time, whenever that may be. And I hope you all have a great week. Get some crafting in there if you can. And until next time, happy crafting, everyone. Bye.